In this video, we'll talk about the complement system and the associated disorder. This is for USMLE step 1 and this is a high yield video. So stay tuned till the end. Complement proteins are set of proteins that cooperate between innate and adaptive immune system to eliminate pathogens like bacteria. So these complement proteins are generated by the liver and they comprises about 15% of the globulin protein in the plasma. So how does complement protein work? At very simple level, these are a bunch of proteins that assemble on the membrane of the bacteria and form a membrane attack complex and thereby it allows leakage of fluid from the bacteria and the bacteria burst. This is how complement system works. Now there are different pathways of complement activation. Very briefly, there are three pathways. The lectin pathway and the classical pathway starts differently. So the lectin pathway starts with mannose binding lectin, which recognizes the sugar moieties on the plasma membrane. And the classical pathway is based on antigen antibody interaction. And it also requires the protein known as C1Q. Now in the cl classical pathway, there are complement proteins C2 and C4, which get cleaved by these com membrane complex and forms C4B and C2B. So all these C4B and C2B together form the enzyme known as C2B and C4B, which is also known as C3 convertase. And this enzyme is really important. C3 convertase convert C3 as the name suggests into C3A and C3B. Further, C3B get associated with these membrane association and form the C5 convertase. C5 convertase is a crucial player in the complement pathway. C5 convertase converts C5 into C5A and C5B. All these C5A, C3A, they can work like potential anaphylatoxin. Then further, C5B can embed itself into the membrane and attract further complement proteins like C6 to C8. Eventually, it forms the membrane attack complex, which is basically several rings of C9 protein. And this leads to fluid leakage from the membrane. And these pore leads to lysis of the bacteria. Now, this was basically the classical pathway. Now, lectin-dependent pathway works via MASP1, C2 and C4. It converge at the level of C3 convertase. So many pathways actually converge at the level of C3 and C5 convertase, such as the alternative pathway. Alternative pathway requires factors like factor D, B, or propyridine. So they all converge into C3 convertase or otherwise C5 convertase. Ultimate goal is to create the membrane attack complex and lead to fluid leakage. Now, complement system can also decorate the bacteria with complement protein and this is known as opsonization. So these opsonized bacteria can be engulfed by several uh, phagocytotic cells such as macrophages or let's say a dendritic cell. And this phagocytosis is triggered by several receptors present on the surface of these cells such as CR1, complement receptor 3, CR4, FC receptor, etc. But have you ever wondered why does host cells are unaffected by complement system? Why membrane attack complex does not form on the surface of a host cell? Because there are specific inhibitory proteins present in the host cell that, that prevents complement mediated attack. This is how there is, uh, the host cell uh, prevent any kind of collateral damage during complement fix fixation. Now let's talk about the complement deficiencies. So the early complement deficiency is basically deficiency in the protein complement C1 to C4. Major deficiency occurs at C3 and when C3 is not available, the initial part of the complement system is messed up. This lead to and increase the chances of recurrent uh, pyogenic infection in the respiratory tract infection. So there are other problems. Uh, C3B and this C3 convertase enzyme complex cannot form. As a result, uh, the complement fixation is not happening and it also increases the risk of systemic lupus. There are other deficiencies such as terminal complement deficiencies where the proteins of C5 to C9 are, 9 could be deficient. 
that increases the susceptibility of Neisseria bacteremia. So you can understand that for any of these complement deficiencies, there is a common theme, recurrent bacterial infection, because these proteins are necessary to kill bacteria. And when there is a deficiency in these protein, obviously, there would be bacterial infection and more chance of bacterial infection. C1 esterase inhibitor deficiency is another type of complement deficiency, which causes hereditary angioedema. And it leads to upregulation of calcrine and bradykinin. It leads to edema in different regions, especially in the facial portions. Also, there is another deficiency known as uh, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobinuria. So in this particular uh, uh, deficiency, what happens is a particular X-linked gene known as phosphatidyl inositol glycan class A or pig A, which gets mutated. So it actually produces a GPI anchor protein. So when this GPI anchor protein is not produced, it leads to problem. Proteins that are responsible for regulation of complement activity such as CD55, CD59 are thereby preventing from attaching to the cell surface. That means overall complement system is hyperactive and dysregulated. This leads to fixation of complement on RBC surfaces lead to lysis of these cells. So that leads to uh, hemolytic, uh, so hemolytic effect and anemia can also be a result of this kind of situation. So all the complement deficiency is summarized in this table. You can pause this video and get a quick overview of these uh, diseases. If you need more flashcards and notes, you can go to my Facebook page or Instagram. You can support our channel using super thanks. See you in next video.